They say, every day is for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. But ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, has reversed the role. It is now every day for the owner of the house. If you're involved in bribery, over-invoicing, or any shady deal, the day of reckoning has come. ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, is watching you. If you're reported for any corrupt practice, you'll be investigated, prosecuted, and punished. Corruption is harmful to our nation. Join the campaign against it by reporting any corrupt practice to ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Let me join hand with ICPC, make them better. Let's make Nigeria great again. ICPC, they want to watch the corruption. Break the chain of corruption now. Don't give, don't take. This message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. The Commonwealth Secretary General, Right Honorable Baroness Patricia Scotland, recently described corruption as a global tsunami that is wreaking destruction on the economies and societal lives of nations. She also revealed that the African continent loses over $148 billion per annum through corruption, money laundry, and other illicit transactions. Welcome to Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. I'm your host, Hawa Garuba. Today on the program, we shall focus on the just concluded 8th Annual General Meeting and Conference of Heads of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Commonwealth Africa with the theme, Partnering Towards Assets Recovery and Return, which was hosted by Nigeria. We'll bring you anti-corruption stories after this timeout. <laughs> Madam, <laughs> ah, what are we going? Okay, uh, Madam, no worry. Uh, when you deliver the balance, we will give you the goods. No problem. Eh? No problem. <laughs> All right, so now well done. Eh? <laughs> All right, well done. Uh, thank you. Eh? Right. Hey, Oga. Okay. I said she don't bring money. Maybe we we'll use this one for him now. She wants mahogany, not white wood. <laughs> Oga, okay, our work now to join wood together, deliver whatever to customer, put the remaining profit for pocket. This is corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Corruption not in my country. 233.6 billion naira fraud. ICPC docs UK based neurology professor and wife, Murna Banabas Atiai, brings us details. ICPC has charged a United Kingdom-based professor of neurology, Ruben Oluwaki Milei Obaro, and his wife, Mrs. Ayodele Olubumi Obaro, a practicing nurse in the UK, to court for misappropriating 233.6 million naira belonging to the federal government. The suspects who are facing an eight-count charge before Justice A.O. Ebong of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Zuba, were charged for allegedly committing several offenses including misleading officers of the commission, frustrating investigation, and misappropriating funds meant for the establishment of a stroke center in Nigeria, being funded by the defunct subsidy reinvestment empowerment program, SHOPI. The accused persons contravened sections 25, subsection 1A, 15, and 16, of the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Act 2000 and punishable under the same sections. Details of the case revealed that a couple had proposed to Shopi the establishment of a specialized stroke center for the management of the rising incidence of stroke among Nigerians to be run by them for the government. Using their company, Stephen James Healthcare Limited, they allegedly accessed a seed grant of 450 million naira in January 2015 from Shopee for the construction and purchase of medical equipment for the center to be known as Stephen James Stroke Center for Excellence. However, 185 million naira out of that money they had received was purportedly used for the payment of a plot of land which documents revealed had been theirs since 2013. Further details show that the Obaros retrieved 37 million naira 
out of 57 million naira paid to a Lagos medical supplies company, Junsi, for the supply of medical equipment to the center for their personal use. The accused persons were also accused of colluding to embezzle 11.6 million naira of the Shopee seed grant which they used to procure a Toyota Prado Jeep for their personal use. Accused persons also contravened Section 311 and punishable under Section 312 of the Penal Code Cap 532 Laws of the Federal Capital Territory Abuja 2006. Counsel to the Obaros J.M. Iguangu San urged the court to sustain their administrative bail after they had pleaded not guilty to all the counts when they were read to them. In another development, Joy Aja gives duties on the courtesy visit paid to the Commission by some delegates of the Conference of Heads of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Commonwealth Africa. Lack of political will and undue interference in the operations of some anti-corruption agencies by state powers have been identified at the just concluded Conference for Heads of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Commonwealth Africa as some of the factors bedeviling the anti-corruption fight in the African continent. Speaking against this backdrop, Spokesperson of ICPC, Mrs. Rashidat Okodua, has revealed that the Commission was not subjected to the control of anyone in carrying out its mandate. Mrs. Okodua made this revelation on behalf of ICPC while welcoming some delegates of the conference who paid a courtesy visit to the Commission in Abuja recently. According to the spokesperson, the strength of ICPC's enabling law and character of the chairman and board members it had have enabled the Commission to operate without any form of interference from any quarter. The law also says that ICBCC, our name is Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission. The law at Section 314 guarantees that independence by saying that the ICPC is not subject to anybody's control or authority while it is operating the law. Uh, this is the legislation here that it's not subject to anybody's control. So we are more or less uh, insulated from political pressures. You know, uh, but uh, well, not that there wouldn't be or there wouldn't be attempts. But then, on the strength of the law and on the strength of the character of the chairmen we've had and the members of board we have had, we have resisted such temptations. The board itself originally was inaugurated on the 29th of September 2000, the very first board, the Pioneer Board. That's about the board. We have a secretary who handles all administrative matters and reports to the chairman on staff issues, but well, the chairman and board are responsible for operational issues. More, uh, I mean, especially the chairman. The chairman is, uh, has a lot of powers under this law, a lot of powers under the law. So that's how we run. The law mandates us to do three major things. Investigation, receipt of petitions, investigation of those petitions, and prosecution where necessary. That's one plank of you know, function. Another plank is prevention of corrupt practices. And under that uh, mandate, we have the power to go into the government MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies, proactively on our own, or reactively somebody brings a report to us to, to check their systems and processes. And where we find that those processes are deficient in terms of ethical standards, or we find that they are prone to corrupt practices, we have the power to do a review of the processes and supervise and direct that the MDAs take on board those reviews. And we've done a lot under that power. The third major function that we have is public education and enlightenment. I heard somebody say she was from public education in Ghana. We also have that in ICPC. And under that, what we do is to simply do all we can to educate the public on and against the ills of corruption. First, to let them know that corruption is bad for everybody. Everybody suffers, as, as you very well know. And also, to let them know what penalties, what sanctions await anyone who dabbles into such issues. So that's what the visitors were amazed by the innovative initiatives deployed by the Commission to achieve huge successes in its anti-corruption drive. I am Joy Aja, reporting for ICPC.
if you are just tuning in, this is Corruption Must Go. A fundamental part of the Commonwealth endeavors is to support member states combat corruption, tackle its destructive tendencies, and improve governance. To achieve this objective, the Commonwealth Secretariat prioritizes anti-corruption work by supporting in-country collaborative approaches and mobilizing all key institutions and stakeholders to deal with the issues of corruption. Following years of in-country work, the Secretariat decided in 2011 to bring all heads of anti-corruption agencies in Commonwealth Africa to a conference. The first conference was held in Gaborón, Botswana in May 2011. Meetings have so far been held in Zambia in 2012, Mauritius in 2013, Ghana in 2014, Tanzania in 2015, Namibia in 2016, and Malawi in 2017. This year's conference offered an opportunity for all participating heads of anti-corruption agencies to share innovative experience, toolkits, and best practices. The conference objective was achieved through a combination of presentations, group discussions, and networking. watching corruption must go. Speaking at the event, Nigerian's president, Muhammadu Buhari, who was represented by the vice president, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, observed that waging war against corruption would be futile if the stolen assets were not recovered and returned. It has been rightly described as a crime against humanity because of the implications on the lives and livelihoods of all, especially the poorest, it undermines democracy and the rule of law. It distorts markets. It erodes the quality of life. It allows organized crime and terrorism to flourish. And it triggers needless wars and bloodshed. And indeed, much has been lost and is still being lost. A report that may be cited in this gathering is the one by the One Campaign titled The One Trillion Dollar Scandal. The 2014 report claims that de developing countries lose $1 trillion annually to corporate transgressions, most of it traceable to the activities of companies with secret ownership, and I'll come back to that point. Another report that may enjoy mention here is the 2015 report of the high-level panel on illicit financial flows from Africa, chaired by our guest of, hon of honor today, the former South African president, uh, Becky. The panel concluded in its report that Africa has lost over $1 trillion over a 50-year period and that Africa loses more than $50 billion annually to illicit financial flows. Most of these illicit flows are perpetrated in the extractive sector and many through companies with hidden ownerships. The cost of corruption, therefore, imposes on all African countries and governments a moral obligation to fight it with vigor and political will by strengthening all institutions and systems involved in law enforcement as well as in promoting a culture of transparency and accountability. Now while public sector corruption is the usual focus, the private sector's complicity is significant, especially with large multinational corporations engaged in tax evasion or transfer pricing. But it is the more complex web of public-private collusion and connivance that results in proceeds of corruption ending up in countries and especially in their financial institutions and systems. Dismantling the conspiracies that facilitate the export of stolen assets is probably as important as the theme of this conference, which is partnering towards assets recovery and return. It underscores the fact that fighting corruption is futile if we do not ensure that the proceeds of corruption find no safe haven, and that such proceeds are fully recovered and promptly repatriated. Recovering stolen assets not only accomplishes the goal of restitution, 
It also serves as a potential deterrent to future corruption. Some of the dignitaries who spoke at the conference noted that the African continent cannot progress unless corruption was reduced to the barest minimum. About the matter of generating the resources that we need to address this development challenge. And in that sense, our anti-corruption agencies are must be at the center of that struggle of the struggle to make sure that we retain within our continent the resources that we need to address as our single socio-economic development challenges. And that's why then you must say, I was very, very pleased that I received this uh, request from uh, the acting chairperson of the FCC, Ibrahim Abu, to come and uh, share a little bit of time with you. Uh, people who must stand at the forefront of that struggle to retain within our continent the resources that we need. Resources that are exported out of Africa through corrupt practices. I assure you that wherever, wherever you have the political will, you can always make it an inroad and a successful one in the fight against corruption. In the process, we don't have to forget the masses because you need the information and they have a lot to offer. So we carry them along. And on behalf of the judiciary, I can only tell you that we are there to help, to help to sustain the effort of not even eradicating by bringing it down to the fairest men minimum. That, that we've been bled dry in this nation by corrupt leadership and their agencies is nothing to reiterate. It's a given. And I took the trouble yesterday to visit the headquarters of EFCC. I wanted to see what will be the mode of hospitality of some of our leaders who will surely sooner or later pass through the doors of that beautiful building not far from here. Uh, I think that until, I'm not a vengeful person, but I think until we make sure that some of our leaders pass through those doors, the struggle against corruption in this country will not be won, will not be over. And so I spoke to my group, I said, I want to see. I said, I want to see where's the presidential wing in this place. I said, I'm a human rights person, I want to make sure that you treat them right when they come here. And he said, sorry, it's an egalitarian institution. And I said, okay, I'll take that message back to them. I said, you get ready to go down a little bit in status when the time comes and justice catches up with them. For now, your responsibility, I believe, is just to help us recover the rest of the loot which is still flying all over the continent and reinforcing the development of other nations. We must really try to make sure that all our leaders, all leaders that are, you know, are elected into office, they do not, they, they should check themselves to make sure that if, I mean, what, if they are there, let them earn what they, you know, what they get. But let them not touch if I mean, the nations uh, the, the, in the coffers. Because doing that, you are stealing and you are depriving the ordinary people of their right. Now that is what you've come here to, to discuss. And I would like to say, to ask you, uh, in your discussion, try to find ways and means that we can encourage if I'm an old leadership to, uh, to move away from being tempted uh, to touch national uh, you know, wealth. You know, and let them uh, you know, be honest to themselves and 
to ensure that such thing does not, uh, does not happen uh, in, in, again. Because it gives all of us, all heads of state, uh, former, uh, former heads of state, gives us a very bad name and image. And we know that such a thing should not be, uh, you know, should not be done. Should not, not surprising, because at a time of international tension and disagreement, it represented the coming together of 53 countries from six regions, representing one-third of the world's population, 25% of the landmass, 78% of the oceans of the world, and 2.4 billion people, 60% of whom were under the age of 30. And all of those 53 countries came together to form a binding agreement on matters of global importance for all. We are also just weeks away from the start of the hurricane season in the Caribbean, the cyclone season in the Pacific, and the start, start already of the storms across Asia. Now, climate change, as we saw last year when it started with mudslides in Sierra Leone, can devastate and destroy lives, livelihoods, and wreak untold damage to physical and social infrastructure, unleashing a tide of destruction which is difficult to withstand, a climatic avalanche which we have somehow to stem and with which we must somehow now deal. And over the next four days, we will be seeking... I'm making his presentation, the Acting Chairman, Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, Dr. Musa Usman Abubakar, restated the commitment of the Commission to achieving its three-pronged mandate of enforcement, prevention and public education has a three-pronged uh, mandate which uh, can be found under section 6 a to f of uh, the act that is the scpc act uh, this uh, you know three-pronged mandate include enforcement uh, prevention then the final one is public enlightenment and mobilization so from this six uh, items we can see that uh, the commission has multifunctional uh, role in fighting corruption um actually you know the, the major the first mandate we have that is the enforcement is under section uh, 6a of our uh, act that is uh, enforcement and enforcement is the normal you know, common, I mean, approach to fighting any crime. Um, we actually uh, undertake that, uh, you know, uh, mandate, but we notice that that mandate has some um, limitations. One of them is prolonged trials. It also consumes lots of uh, resources. The value of the asset meant to be, you know, uh, you know, recovered may diminish before I mean the case is over and public have doubt as to whether we're actually you know uh, pursuing so uh, somebody you know or we're just putting him just to play to the gallery uh, and another thing we notice with this is that uh, it leaves very limited room for innovation you know enforcement has very limited uh, room for innovation, um, yet the Commission uh, 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 you know, uh, resolved that you know, for you to fight corruption, enforcement and prevention, these two mandates must necessarily go hand in hand for you to fight uh, corruption. Some of the foreign participants expressed satisfaction with the conference, saying that they would replicate some of ICPC's innovative initiatives in their climbs to boost their anti-corruption drive. That's our package for today. See you again same time next week. Bye for now. <music>